new loops recently cut at this intersection. They were previously not here before. And the contractor brought all the cables into the cabinet. Now the nice thing is the contractor went ahead and labeled each cable. I've been in cabinets before where they just brought the cables in without labeling and then you gotta spend half your time trying to figure out where each uh, loop goes to. So that saved me a lot of time here. Now that we have the two cables inside this jacket exposed, what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the insulation off this wire here. And this wire here. That one I probably did too much. Cut that off. Then we're going to take this wire Vaco, just stick her in there. I'm going to crimp it down. So that's part of the new end of that cable now. And we'll do the other one. Crimp that one down. Now you have a way to connect this cable from the street to your panel. Now, as I stated previously, we did not have any side street loops here. We had some radar set up and they were just kind of flaking out. So we decided to cut some loops here. So the side streets are four and seven and three and eight. So I know the phasing now, but I gotta know where to land these once I terminate the cables for the loop detection. So over here, I can see on my designation of our phases here here's where I need to land them at and they are on it's pretty faded here but a P and N is what it looks like so I'm looking at my side panel here I see my P and my N and that's where I need to locate or where I need to terminate my cables at on this panel now, I had a question before about how do you know what channel, what card you're using on the detector rack based on where you're landing your, your loop detector cables. So if you look here, if I wanna reuse this slot here, you can see we're utilizing channel one and channel two. So I wanna use channel one and channel two of detector eight. So, now that I know that, I'll come to my print here. And if you see channel one is on terminals D and E, and channel two is on J and K, I'll come over here to my print. And I'm gonna look for three and eight D and E. J and K. So I know P, two and three are gonna be where I land one of those cables for detection. And P, five and six will be for the other loop for that direction. And that will be then assigned to that detector card. Now with the loops in place, terminated, and a card installed for these you can see I've already got a detection over here. I got a semi over there. And that is for the left turn. And we're going yellow. And let's just see if we get our green light here for them, which we can't see over here. It's on my side, but they've got it. Let's just make sure that once they pull off that loop that that drops because I do have a call in there. It dropped out. It dropped out. So that side's good. Yep. She's all working good. I had to keep looking to make sure they're getting their green light. But 
they are. So all the new traffic signal detector loops are working correctly. And I had to refer to the print often to make sure I was landing them in the right spot. But uh, that's a good takeaway for all you novice to practice uh, signal maintainers. You know, you got to really learn that print. Study it so you know where all the wires are going to and you learn how that integrates throughout the cabinet. And that's how you get really good. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. Like the channel and spread the word. Because I'm here to help the traffic signal maintainer maintain their traffic signals. I'll see you next time.